Hey everyone, it's uh, Sunday, it's another Junior Church. Uh, welcome back. I hope you've had a great week. I just wanted to let you know that I am off on holidays as of later on today. I'm not going anywhere, but I am just taking some time off, which means that uh, uh, basically uh, I'm not going to be, there's not going to be a uh, Junior Church for a couple of weeks. Uh, but however, there is Holiday Club starting tomorrow if you want to dip into that and have a little bit of fun a little bit of teaching and singing and things like that uh, you can dip in and out as you wish you can just fast forward through things but uh, you know if you want some uh, for the next couple of weeks if there isn't you know anything else that you found you can always just play uh, a holiday club uh, session and and just join in with that if you wish or if there's anything you have to catch up on from previous weeks of junior church then in the next couple of weeks would be a perfect opportunity to do so and I just wanted to um, check if anybody has been uh, patient uh, six weeks ago we taught uh, we learned about patience uh, one of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit and the experiment I did was the uh, dissolve the water, uh, dissolve sugar in water, add some uh, food colouring. I did a safety pin and string and kept it in place with a pen. And the idea is that it was to, to be patient and wait and sugar crystals would form. But I don't know about you, whether you kind of lost patience, whether you threw it out and said, oh, I've had enough, your mum said, what's this clutter, what's this mess, and just threw it away. Anyway, I, I put mine in my utility room on the windowsill, and to be honest with you, it's not so much patience, it's probably, well, it's not in the way, I'll just leave it, and it, there's an element of I couldn't be bothered to throw it away. Anyway, earlier in the week, I thought, right, that's it, it's been there a long time, I know it's been there a long time. I lifted my kitchen roll, and I looked in, and guess what? Some sugar crystals have formed on the string. Not many, but they just not many of them have attached to the string because in the jar, and I'm not sure if you can see, but there's some on the bottom of the jar and some that you see floating on the top of the liquid that are just dipping down into the liquid. Uh, so basically, I want to encourage you that if you gave up after a couple of weeks or a week or something like that, then you could challenge yourself to be patient again. Redo the experiment, and then now you know that you have to be patient for about five weeks before they form. So there you go. That's how long you have to be patient for with that uh, experiment. So because we have now finished uh, the fruit of the spirit, we're going to move on to a new topic. We're going to uh, learn about more about who Jesus is, who he describes himself to be. And you may well have heard of the I am statements. Well, the I, I am statements we find in the Gospel of John. And this is how Jesus describes himself uh, more to us, uh, as from, from words from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Obviously, we learn who Jesus is by his actions and what we read and what others have um, written about him. But these are Jesus' words themselves, the I am statements. And I think there's more there's more kind of depth to them because this is from Jesus' mouth. These are the things that he he needs us to know about himself. Um, and the other things are all um, extra and are great to know about Jesus. But the key things that we need to know about him are these statements, the things that Jesus describes himself uh, and the way he describes himself are the things that we need to know about Jesus and um, there are seven of them so we're going to just introduce this week and then once I'm back from holidays there's going to be seven weeks of these I am statements so we are today we're going to look at 
Old Testament and New Testament. So in the Old Testament as to how Jesus, how God describes him, how, how, how God uses the I am um, to describe himself. And then when Jesus repeats that use and actually what effect it has on the people around him. Uh, so before we start, let, let's have a word of prayer and then we will get stuck into the Bible. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together. Thank you that we can open your word and, uh, and read together. Lord, we thank you uh, for this time that has been set apart for us to study your word. And we pray, Lord, that you would reveal yourself more and more to us in, through your word today in a very clear way. And Lord, it may be a familiar passage to us that we're reading. So please, would you just see, help us to see new things, to help us read it with fresh eyes and with um, an excitement to learn something new. Uh, it's so easy when we read familiar Bible scripture to just gloss over because, oh yeah, I know what it's going to say. I know what's happening. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to just slow down and to to take it on board today and read uh, and see it in new light we pray and uh, thank you lord that you are with us as we uh, look at your word and read it together amen the i am uh, statements basically uh, it's it's how jesus is describing himself um, as the same all-powerful god who acted uh, throughout the Old Testament and um, we're going to learn about those characteristics of God and how and of Jesus and how that grows our faith and how it develops our faith the more we understand Jesus the more we get to know him then the more faith we have in because having faith is but is that belief in something we can't feel that we can't touch that we you know we can't see Jesus in flesh um, today so we have faith that what we are reading is is the truth um, so so my 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 prayer is that Jesus is really revealed to us in a tangible way that takes us further and deeper in our faith um, because the more we learn about Jesus, the more we want to know him. So that would be my prayer for us today. Um, and, and basically, I just want to start with a question uh, that I'm going to pose to you, and that is, who are you? So I want you to pause the video, and I want you to think about that for a second, and, and kind of, how would you describe yourself? We can always just say, you know, we can say our names, but that doesn't tell us anything about us. That just tells us the name your parents chose to call you. That's not, that's not who you are. So I want you to think about maybe, maybe three things that you could say to the person in the room with you that would, would describe yourself. How do you see yourself? And what information do you want the other person to know about you? That helps them to get to know you okay so who are you and I'll give you a hint each one is going to start with I am so pause the video and have some fun have some fun with this so the I am it's kind of define defining us who we are when we say I am uh, so you know we can start with our name I am Rhiannon but it doesn't tell you anything about me I am a wife, I am a mother, I am a baker, and that tells you I love baking cakes. Uh, I'm not a chef, but I am a baker, and it's not professional, but I enjoy it. Uh, I am a dog lover, you've met my dogs, they, Elsie and Millie, uh, I love them to bits. Uh, I am a dog walker, I am a children's worker, all of these help build up a picture of who I am as a person and and when when we when we do that when we reveal that stuff about ourselves we are uh, inviting somebody to get to know us better and 
we're going to, you know, if we think about who is it in the world that we want to get to know better, then it's Jesus. You might have thought that it was some famous person on the, on the TV or something like that, but actually no, it's Jesus. Jesus is the one person that we should all want to get to know better. And of course we have the Bible that reveals who Jesus is to us. So we're in a really privileged position. The I am statements that we will be looking at from, that Jesus says are all found in the book of John. And uh, so we're going and, and they describe and tell us about who Jesus is. And each of those statements gives us a little bit more of an insight, a bit more of a description as to who Jesus is. And they are going to start with I am. Now they're called the I am statements, so it seems obvious that they will start with I am. And you know, that's how we often describe ourselves, isn't it? We use those words, I am. However, in the Bible, the I am has an incredibly special meaning. So we're going to start with the Old Testament. So we're going we're to look at uh, God and his use of I am. And then we're going to dip into the New Testament for a little bit to see how Jesus first uses it. So... Let's look at uh, Exodus, so Old Testament, we're going to look at Exodus, Exodus chapter 3, and it's called Moses and the Burning Bush. Now, the chances are that uh, you are familiar with this, and that's why in my prayer I said actually, you know, just to reveal to us something new, something fresh in these words. So, chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 1, and we're going to read through to verse um, 17. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mount mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within the bush. Moses saw that through the bush, though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to, the, to, the, to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. You are standing, where you are standing is, uh, take your sandals off. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I've seen the way the Egyptians are impressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, appeared to me and said, 
I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt, and I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. So the first thing, a little bit of context, is that uh, Moses has left Egypt because he killed an Egyptian and was seen doing so, um, so he escapes punishment. And then he meets his wife and is uh, tending flock for his father-in-law. And uh, God, God reveals himself to Moses and speaks to him because he's got a plan, he's got a job for Moses to do. And, um, you know, so Moses sees something, but it isn't actually kind of what, 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 he, what he thinks is seeing. So the bush is on fire, but actually it's not burning up. And then uh, God, this is how God is appearing to him and God speaks to him. And, and kind of the first thing... Um, you know, as as Moses is approaching the bush to to kind of have an explore and investigate what's going on, uh, God calls him. Uh, you know, Moses, Moses, and Moses says, "Here I am." And then God says, "Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals, for your, the place where you are standing is holy ground." And he and then he tells him who he is. I'm the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. And Moses' response is to hide his face. So he knew, he knew that was God, and he was afraid to look at God. Um, and then God says, yeah, I, you know, I know what's been going on. I've heard the cries of my people, I've heard them, and um, I'm going to use you. And Moses said, but, oh, well, no, you can't use me, I'm not, I'm not the right person. Well, of course, you know, the thing is that God speaks to people and God uh, gives people jobs. Not because pe the people think they're going to be good at it. It's because God knows that they're the right people. So Moses uh, kind of, he just wants a little bit of reassurance. And he comes up with all of these things. But what are they going to say? Uh, they're going to believe me. And who, who do I say is, is, is giving these instructions? And this is when and God says to Moses, I am who I am. Tell them I am sent you. And this is the name that uh, God has given this is his eternal name because in verse um, six, uh, 15 it says, This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generations to generations. I am. That's it. There's no need, no need to say any more. This reveals to us, this is God's never, never changing um, character. He's, he has always been perfect and loving, and he always will be. Uh, he's always been the perfect, he, he will always be the perfect loving God forever. So, you know, it's kind of, I am, and that is enough. We see God refer to himself as I am. Am, capital letters, capital A, and actually um, in verse uh, 14, it's all capital letters. And um, sometimes in the Bible, uh, God is referred to as Yahweh, or Lord with all capital letters. And this is God's way of reminding when we see them those words or the capital letters is God's way of reminding us that he is perfect and he is all we will ever need for anything. And this is, the, um, this is God's calling himself, I am, first time in the Old Testament. And by using that I am 
title, what he's saying to Moses is, it's only God that can help the Israelites get out of Egypt. And God's prom God promises to redeem his people from captivity, to provide them with that home in the land flowing with milk and honey, providing a home that has everything that they need. We're going to jump to the New Testament. So this is God describing himself as I am. And we're going to just uh, compare that with when, when, uh, when Jesus uses I am. And um, again, Jesus has a lot of different names that he goes by. And particularly at Christmas, we hear a lot of the Prince of Peace wonderful counsellor, um, Messiah, Lamb of God, you know, there's there's so many titles for Jesus. Um, but we're going to learn a bit, and, and each of this helps us to learn about more of who Jesus is. So the I am, again, for Jesus is going to help us just understand who he is. Um, and we'll see why he's using that. Uh, just before uh, the passage we read, Jesus is telling the crowd how they can be set free from their sins by following him. Um, but the crowd, they are arguing because they don't want to, they don't see themselves as sinners and they don't recognize their need to be set free from sin. So they're arguing. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear things that make them feel better about themselves. So that's not what Jesus has come to do. Jesus hasn't come to tell us that we're doing great and everything's going to be fine just as we are. Jesus has come to save us. So, and some people, and still today, some people find that really hard message to hear. They will not acknowledge that they need anyone except for themselves. So we can relate to that um, in the New Testament. I'm sure there are people you know who are. Um, unwilling to accept Jesus as their saviour because they don't think they need saving. But Jesus, he has a strong response to them, so the people in the Old Testament, and this message is relevant for those today as well. And what we're going to do here is hear how the crowd react. So we are going to jump to John's Gospel and we are going to read so John chapter 8 and we're going to start at verse 54. I'm going to read 54 through to 59. Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet fifty years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham. Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. So, Jesus instills um, a really strong response to the people because of his claim. And um, basically, when he said, before Abraham was ever born, I am. And you know, they, they kind of, they say, well, they pick up stones and to stone him. So they want to kill him. And I just want you to pause the video and just have a think or have a chat about why do you think they wanted to kill Jesus? This particular group of people, why did they want to kill Jesus? Well, <clears throat> Basically, we, we kind of often think of Jesus um, as kind of the happy-go-lucky teacher. He made people feel good. He made them feel better. But with two little words, it almost got Jesus stoned by the angry crowd. Because Jesus is drawing 
the lines of identity between the crowd and himself. He is saying, you know what, I'm nothing like you. I am not like you. I'm on this side of the line and you are on that side. And on this side of line is God. So I am on the same side as God. He offends them in that way. What he does, he tells them they're a slave to sin. So everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And of course we know sin is, is doing, saying, thinking, feeling the things that hurt God. And, and sometimes it's, it's not doing the right thing as well. It's choosing to not do something. And it shows rebellion against God. And basically that's us, that's humanity. We are rebellious, we are sinful, and it shows how far we are missing the mark of pleasing God. And then, so after Jesus saying that to the people, which of course is relevant for us today, he then drops a, a bomb of a thought about his identity. He knows that the Jews trust their family tree. So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And because of what's gone on, because of what has happened, then the Jews think that their sin was covered. You know, they are um, for, uh, giving sacrifices, that their, their atonement sacrifices, their sin sacrifices, their sin offerings, all make them right with God. And they think their sin is covered. But Jesus now, because Jesus has come, he now offends them because he tells them the truth. But of course, as with everything that Jesus says, he does it with love. But he says, look, I know your background, but the way you're trying to, to um, kill me, you're showing who your real father is. And you're showing that your real father is the devil. So, whoa, can you imagine? No, you know, I can see they were furious. This crowd would have been really angry because Jesus has just accused them of killing, uh, killing himself, who is God on earth, who is God's son, chosen son, the savior of all mankind. And if they're trying to kill him, then... The only, the only person that they can call their father is the devil. And it's going, whoa! I can kind of get, uh, understand, there's a bit of stone action going on. Um, because Jesus says, I am. No, they know their scripture. They know um, that Moses uh, was met God in the burning bush. They know that God used the phrase, I am, his name, I am. And here is Jesus saying the same thing. And um, these are sacred words. These are the words that, uh, as well as Yahweh and um, uh, Lord, capital L-O-R-D, these are names that the Jews wouldn't use. They would not even say them. They are so sacred. And here is Jesus using the, 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 that name, I am, uh, to their faces. And if you think what they are viewing, they're looking at a, you know, kind of a young man of 30. And he's saying that he knows God and he is greater and older than Abraham, their father, and you know they they must be thinking, are you just out to offend us big time? You know, could you offend us any more? You're just adding lashings and lashings to your offence, to our faces. He's claiming to be divine. Now, what we've got to remember is the reason they wanted to stone him is because they view him as being blasphemous. So by claiming to, by using the title I am, Jesus is saying that he is God. Now we are privileged in the fact that we have the whole, the whole of the New Testament. 
So we know that Jesus is God, but this is the first time that Jesus is revealing himself as God to people, and he's describing himself as God. He wants them to get to know him as God, the Messiah, God's chosen son, part of the Trinity, you know, God the Son. But they see it as blasphemous. So to put yourself on, on par with God is an offence that would be uh, that were punishable by stoning, stoning to death. They didn't want to believe what they were hearing. They were too comfortable in their ways and they certainly didn't want to hear somebody speaking against their family tree and somebody speaking against God by putting himself on the same level. So they wanted him gone. They wanted him killed because he's blaspheming. But... Um, and I just want you to think, you don't have to, you can pause the video and have a think. If you were in, in the shoes of the Jews, how do you think you would respond? And almost now, it's kind of put it, put it into context now. What is your response? So you can put yourself in the place of the Jews would you respond just as they did would you think actually this guy's blaspheming you know who think who he is um what they know of him what they've already experienced and heard about him how would you respond then and actually knowing everything you do know about jesus what is your response have you made a response to jesus or not yet so pause the video and even if you just have a think to yourself or think about it later, I just want to pose those questions to you. Now there's lots and lots of ideas uh, around who Jesus is and the book of John helps us to clarify that with the I, I am statements. Um, you know, Jesus' claims of uh, what, you know, the claims of what he did, uh, the eyewitness accounts of what he did, uh, all written in the New Testament. Um, and in John's Gospel, then we have the I am statements, the words that jo Jesus uses to describe himself. Um, telling us who the real Jesus is and how he impacts on your view of the world, um, thinking about how he confronted the crowd, the crowd of Jews, they, he confronted them and um, was just exposing them to their sinful behaviour and, and telling them their need of a rescuer and their rescuer is standing right in front of him because he is God and they picked up stones. Not, not all of them. So there would have been a, a variety of responses. Some would have picked up stones wanting to kill him because they were, he was blaspheming in their eyes. Others heard what he said and wanted to know more. There's, some, there's the same reactions these days when people um, hear about Jesus. Some who respond in a way that says actually you know i don't need jesus I'm, I'm all right by myself i'm okay i'm a good person i don't need jesus there are others who hear it and say you know what i try to be a good person but actually you're right i'm a sinner i do mess up i do the wrong things although on the whole i'm a good person so yeah i think about it yeah maybe i i do need somebody and then you've got those who just completely um are just blown away by the revelation that although they are sinners and they recognize they are sinners that they are loved by jesus and jesus wants to save them jesus wants to save us jesus loves us what is your response so maybe um, in the next couple of weeks while I'm away you could be thinking about that about your personal response to Jesus and who he is um, and who you believe that he is 
and then after my holidays we'll come together and we will look at um, some of those statements. And what you think of, you know, this the news that we are hearing is is kind of the best news. It's so the perfect God lives forever. Uh, he loves us that he became a little boy, he grew up, he died, he rose again, all because of his love for us and uh, the need that we have to be rescued. We need a saviour and Jesus has done that. And it's as simple as believing. It's believing that Jesus is, I am, everything that we need. And we can show him that we love him by accepting that invitation of eternal life by believing in what Jesus has done to then serve others to to do the things that Jesus did to love others to care for others um, and to try and be more like Jesus ourselves and each description we're going to come across what we've got to remember is that uh, it begins with I am so each description is a description of of who Jesus is but the first and foremost that I am part of each description it just reminds us that Jesus is God and then what comes after is going to be a little bit extra and um, yeah basically what Jesus is saying we need to love him and we can ask him to forgive our sins and then you know, can we can then once he's forgiven our sins, we say, "I am his. I belong to Jesus. I am a child of God," and that is we can declare that because of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And it's so wonderful to know that Jesus is the great I am because he is God. So some things to think about, hopefully over the next couple of weeks. I would urge you to, to kind of spend the time looking at it and thinking about it for yourself. Um, and and, yeah, and speak, speak to somebody, speak to your parents, get in touch with me if there's anything I can help with in, in, in kind of encouraging you um, and clarifying anything. Um, I will do my very best, but I'm sure... Uh, you have parents who will be glad to have these conversations with you and just guide you uh, along this route of your faith. Let's pray to finish. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You are the great I am, Jesus. You are the great I am. And that is just amazing that the great I am would come down to earth and die for us for our sins, rise again because of the, the love that you have for us. So, Lord, I just I just would pray uh, encouragement for everyone who has heard this lesson to just really think of their response. Um, maybe it's a response they have already made, and I thank you, Lord, that, that this would just solidify and clarify more of their identity in you, that they can celebrate being a child of God. And, Lord, for those who haven't yet made that decision, uh, to believe and respond. Lord, I pray that all that we have read about today would just be an encouragement and just be um, a little bit more information in that description of who you are, what you've done and um, who you are for us, that you are everything. You are the perfect God, the provider of all things and everything that we need we have in you, Lord God, and Lord and Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us, that you guide us, you are with us today. You are God with us um, in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, so we thank you that you will guide us, you will be with us, uh, you, will you will support us and help us and point us in the right direction. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, so have a great couple of weeks. Uh, if you're away, have a great time. If you're at home, have a great time. Stay safe, everyone. And I will see you refreshed and rested in a few weeks' time. So take care, guys, and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone.